Hey guys, it's Amy. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all having a wonderful day as always. So before we even get into anything, if you guys could please do me a huge favor and like and share this video. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Mind Squash and share your thoughts in the comment section. So today we're going to talk about two crimes that have recently happened that are really just proving that our country is going to shit. And that's really just the easiest way I can put it. Things have gotten crazy lately and really disturbing. And that's all I can say. So let's get into this. This is Fistin Noy. You may recognize him from being on the news recently after he raped a woman on a Philadelphia subway train in the middle of the day with people around him able to witness what was going on and yet doing nothing. First, I'd like to show you what the SEPTA police chief, Nestle, had to say um, about this situation. You all have the facts regarding the incident. Uh, what we want everyone to be is angry, disgusted, and join us in being resolute to continue to make the system <laughs> safe. That's what we need help from the public to notify us when they see incidents that are occurring. Riders sometimes don't know when to contact the police. When they see inappropriate behavior, behavior that you wouldn't want your 10 year old to see, call the police. Call 911. If somebody's life is in jeopardy, hit the emergency button or use the SEPTA Transit Watch app. That enables folks to communicate anonymously through text directly with our dispatchers. It is a great way to let us know about things that are happening. In this case, there were very few notifications to the police and there were people on the train. We want people to be our partners and to watch out for other riders. Call the police, let them investigate, let them determine if a criminal act is occurring. And you say very few, so some folks did call, or what can you say? Uh, I can tell you that we're still waiting to hear back from Delaware County's 911, uh, but Philadelphia 911 received no calls, and we received one. And there were people witnessing this act? There were people witnessing the act with phones in their hands. Yes. How many do you know? Uh, I, I can't tell you that. You said, we, you said we know the facts. Relay the facts to us as you know them from the videotape that you've obviously seen. I'm reluctant to do that because it's not my investigation. My officers made the arrest. Our partners, the Upper Darby Police Department, are doing the investigation and the processing. I want to leave the, the details to them. I can tell you that people were holding their phone up in the direction of um, this woman being attacked. Yeah, and I, I don't know I don't know what's running through the minds in, in folks' heads, but on Sunday, Timothy Bernhardt, the superintendent of the Upper Darby Township Police Department, said, I'm appalled by those who did nothing to help this woman. Anybody that was on that train has to look in the mirror and ask why they didn't intervene or why they didn't do something. Yet on Thursday the district attorney said there is a narrative out there that people sat on the L train and watched this transpire and took videos of it for their own gratification. That is simply not true. That the narrative is a misinformation that was scaring off potential witnesses. He emphasized that there is no law in Pennsylvania that would allow the prosecution of these witnesses for failure to intervene. He also said that people in this region are not, in my experience, so inhumane, callous human beings that they're going to sit there and just watch this happen. However, we should also note that his father worked at the very same terminal where this happened. It concerns me enough to want to have a conversation with you folks to get the message out that if people see behavior that is unusual and inappropriate on the trains, on the buses, in stations. We want to know about it. We hear all the time, I, I didn't want to bother you. Bother us. Bother us. Be, be angry, be disgusted, be resolute, 
about making the system safe by contacting us. There's a radio call that says, man disrobing, 56th Street Station, uh, and I guess that's the tip that you get. He couldn't have been stopped earlier? Nobody, 57, 58, the other stops. Any idea why anybody couldn't get to him then? Yeah, I, I mean, we're talking about less than three minutes, Jeff. And, and in three minutes' time, police are coming in contact with that person and making an arrest. I think that's pretty good. Can we do better? Absolutely. If we get more people to contact us earlier on that ride, then we're able to stop the train. If somebody sees something, they think it's a rape, that train's being stopped. You know, a person disrobing isn't necessarily a rape. You know that, that we have a mental health uh, issue in, in the city and the suburbs. Um, people disrobing or in partial, you know, pants down, sadly, um, are calls that we get. You're off-duty employee. What was that off-duty employee doing? They're just riding or were they just gotten off work or what were they doing? No, I... Can't speak to that? I can't speak to that. Okay. Attention, as a reminder, smoking is not permitted on the public platform. They, they both got on at the Frankfurt Transportation Center. And just to be clear, was the arrest made while the train was moving or after it stopped at the train? No, it was stopped here when the door is open. I'm sorry, when the door is open, an officer entered and saw what he believed was a criminal act occurring, ripped that man off of her and pulled her out or pulled him out onto the platform. And at that point the call had already come in to look for that. Correct. He's engaged in the rape when your officers see him. That's correct. I think what that chief of police said was spot on. And I'm gonna get into the specifics of the story in case you don't already know them in just a second. But I do want to say it is disgraceful and terrifying and yet not shocking at all anymore that something like this happens and people are what potentially taking video of it and not contacting the police, not calling the train station, not anything. There's several people sitting there witnessing this. I understand if you don't want to get involved and try to punch this man in the back of the head to help somebody when something this disgusting is going on in public and no one cares. I understand being afraid to do that. Others telling us they're often hesitant to get involved. I've seen people fight and walked away. While SEPTA says they've increased security, they're hoping more riders will also speak up in the name of safety. But you can still call 911. And even if you're afraid that maybe the criminal might hear you and try to come after you as well, you can anonymously do this without anyone acknowledging that you did it and still help someone rather than sitting next to them while they're being raped viciously by some piece of shit in a subway station or a train and videotaping it for who knows what because only one of the videotapes was given to the police department so any others were apparently just for themselves or for their YouTube channel who knows so I'm going to get into the full story of what happened here right now. At approximately 9.15 on October 13th, they both got on at Frankfurt, and he was apprehended at the 69th terminal. I do not have the victim's information, although I would not give it out if I did, but that does not seem to have been released. As I said, this man, Noy, 35 years old, he got on the train at the same time as this woman. He sat down next to her. He tried to speak with her. She basically told him to get lost, at which point he began to try groping her. For This went on for 45 minutes on this train. And then in the last 10 minutes or so, he actually took off her pants, took off his own pants, and began raping her in view of several people that were in the area near them in the train. There was one, one communication to the train police, and it was done by an off-duty SEPTA officer. So none of the actual bystanders called 
or did anything. They got to a stop after hearing of this. The security got onto the train, grabbed the man off of her, and pulled him outside, and he was arrested. I mean, we can be thankful that at least the man was arrested right away and did not have a chance to leave. However, if it wasn't for this one person that did something about it, he would be gone by now. And this is not a man that wouldn't do this again. Not that that's ever the case. He is actually on a student visa. I believe it began in 2012. It expired in 2015. However, he continued to outstay his visa anyway. And in that time, he's racked up several charges, a couple of which were sexual abuse charges. And so he has been arrested, he has been in jail, and he has never been deported after finding out that he has overstayed his visa and is known to be a violent criminal. So this easily could have been avoided if this country was doing right by the citizens rather than worrying about everybody else. And you know what is really just an extra sad part to this story that the one person that actually helped this woman does not want to be shown does not want his name given out and I'm sure that's because it's actually frowned upon these days to be a police officer and it's frowned upon these days to help anybody you're better off to be a criminal So now we're going to talk about this man in the second case. There was a woman on the same train just a few days ago that happened to fall asleep during her commute. And when she woke up, she wasn't sure how to get back to where she needed to be. So she got off the train station and she went into the lobby area and tried to find someone to help her and she ended up talking to this man and he pretended he was going to help her but rather than do so he went on to the 69th street train station brought her into this area here and attacked her if it wasn't for this man she would have been in as same situation as the other woman luckily we had a man like this that heard her cries for help along with a good Samaritan and they actually chose to help her and that doesn't mean that this woman did not also have a horrible ordeal just because she wasn't raped she still went through something that's going to haunt her for the rest of her life she simply asked this man to help her find the other side of the station he said he was going the same way and would go with her and he started groping at her they got to this area here and he basically pushed her up against a wall and he pulled her pants down so part of her butt was exposed and then he pushed himself up against her luckily there was a good Samaritan there that was yelling and eventually the officer heard and he came to her rescue so in a matter of just about a week or so, we had these two men attack two women on the same train in Philadelphia, which makes it all the more scary to be a woman anywhere, commuting or just living your life. Look, security and police can only do so much with what they're given. We need to look out for each other as much as possible. If you see something that looks messed up, you need to contact someone. And they make it so easy. You don't have to call 911. There's literally a button to push. You can push a button. You do have to talk to someone. So if you don't want to do that, there's also this watch app. You go on your phone. It gives you the option to anonymously t say that there's a problem. You click on there, you can put a picture on there, which apparently people can easily get a picture. You get a, a list of options, of problems to complain about, and it's that fast. 
So there's no reason not to report these bastards that have no problem attacking someone in public in broad daylight. We have to stop this. Our country is getting really fucked up right now. And the only thing we can do is try to be there for each other. Instead of everybody dividing and breaking away from each other and fighting and blaming each other for things, we all need to kind of step up and stay together and try to make this a, a better place for our children to grow up. I know that sounds cliche, but I have a 12-year-old, and at this point, I'm worried for what his life is going to be like when he becomes an adult. So we got to fix things right now for them. And that's all I have for today, guys. I'll be back with another one as soon as I can. I hope you guys have a great day. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you next time. All right, thanks. Bye.